expecting someone else. <laughs> Let's go to Collatin's The Prophet in Our Times, where he reports, The great pope, according to some, will be dressed in red. He goes on to say, This may symbolize great devotion to the Holy Ghost. According to one website, Anna Catherine Emmerich foresaw the Pope who will wear red. And from this, a whole proposition has come forth. Our Culleton <clears throat> also notes that the Pope in red may indicate a Pope that is martyred. As white cassock turns red, not because it's red, but from the blood of martyrdom. The great Pope, according to some, will be dressed in red. Now let's stop and think about this. The great Pope. They're proposing that Joseph, formerly Cardinal Siri, was the Pope in red. But the great secret Pope? He never claimed to be Pope. He never once wore a white cassock, to my knowledge. I don't get this one. So let's look at the proposition. Was Siri Pope? Let's look at the proposition as it was laid out in about 1987. In fact, it goes back to, I believe, a 1985 interview. Several men went and interviewed Siri. This was translated into English and published, probably published in French and some other languages. What they proposed was that in 1963, after John 23rd died, Siri received the two-thirds plus one, but before he could be even asked whether he accepted or not, the enemies of the church intervened and prevented his acceptance of the election. And thus he became a, quote, Pope-elect. Then the conclave went ahead and then elected Montini, who took the name of Paul VI. Vatican II continued, Novosorto came in, everything, everything went along. So we come to 1978, Paul VI dies. Siri goes into the election and is again elected. But again, the enemies of the church intervene before he can accept or reject. We get John Paul I. Then again, after John Paul I dies, the whole story is repeated. And thus we have Siri, the great Pope-elect. This was the theory. It was put forward in 1987 about the same time, quite a few people became interested in electing a pope. The number of us who believed that John Paul II was a heretical usurper of the papacy, thus not pope, was increasing. We realized the church has to have a pope, and several people started talking about it, independently put out the word, we need a pope. And voila, appears part one exile of the Pope-elect. It starts reporting the story of Ceres' supposed election as Pope in 1963 and in both 78 conclaves. We have to put this into perspective because the Sede Vacantis theory is still not presented well on the internet in many places, but in the 1980s we all believe John Paul II wasn't Pope. We all believe Paul VI wasn't Pope. But no one had really put it all together. And there's a big question about John XXIII. Was John XXIII Pope? Wasn't he Pope? Most people just simply didn't address it. They hadn't gone back and applied Cum Ex Postulas Officio and what it means to the papacy. And so we kind of had a gray area. That's why the Siri theory if you can call it a theory, gained any acceptance whatsoever. But here it was being presented. It was presented in four parts between 1987 and 1989. And Sede Vacantism took a great step forward 
1990 was clearly presented. Okay, let's go back now and examine the Siri cases presented from 1985 to 1989. Most of it is presented in Exile of the Popelect parts 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we have to take a look at this. What did they say? The 1985 interview, Siri was questioned, Are you Pope? His answer was not no, but it definitely wasn't yes. I am bound by the secret. That's an answer. According to canon law, which repeats the law of God, the Pope is not bound by the secret. The Pope, as the law giver, can dispense from the secret. Therefore, he is not bound by the secret. So by saying, I am bound by the secret, Siri said, I am not Pope. Now, what about this Pope-elect thing put forward? He receives the necessary votes, two-thirds plus one. Let's just say this happened in 63, and the 63 conclave was valid. Let's accept this for a moment. He receives two-thirds plus one, but before he can be asked whether he accepts or rejects, someone intervenes. Well, during that short time period, one is a pope-elect. What that would do to a conclave, I haven't seen a canist even discussion. But, okay, let's just say he's a pope-elect. All right. When someone approached him to uh, talk to him about the unprecedented happenings after his election, well, he was elected according to this theory, just we don't know whether he accepted it or not, the first thing he should say, do you accept election as Pope? In fact, they should go, get out Pope Pius XII's decree, memorize the Latin. The second they walk up to it, they just simply start in to the phrase, go all the way through so he can either accept or reject. If he says, I accept, then we deal with that. If he says, I reject, then he's not Pope. We don't even have to think about him. Okay? So, what are we going to do with this? We have a theory which is all foggy, lots of conjecture, and a man who doesn't say, yes, I'm Pope. And then we have the one convincing piece of evidence, at least to these people. A white bird landing on Ceres' head. Let's go to May 2nd, 1989. Two things happened. That morning, I look out on the front lawn of my parents' house where I was living at the time, and the whitest bird I ever saw landed on the front lawn. My father saw it too, and then a few hours later, I come around and Dad tells me, Siri has died. Well, now we're certain of one thing. Siri has died. His claim to the papacy died with him if it ever really existed in the first place, which I strongly doubt. Okay? And for the Syrianists, because it's based upon the white bird landing on his head, either Dad or I were being designated as Syria's successor. So a Syrianist should look at this and say, well, I must accept Pope Michael. But Syria never claimed to be Pope. I'm bound by the secret. Syria never accepted the election. If he had been elected, his claim died with him. And so what do we have? Siri died, but his claim didn't. Abemus Papa. Benedictione Potentis, Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Sans Superbosimani et Semper. Amen.